talk about insulin pumps and glucose monitors. If you know me, you probably know that I am type 1 diabetic, and these are the little gadgets that help me manage my diabetes. And if you've ever wondered how they worked, what they're for, what they do, then today's the day you get to find out. So basically, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what each of these sensors do and how I put them on. I'll, you'll get to see me actually apply them, you know, press all the buttons, shoot in all the needles. It's not really that scary, I promise. Yeah, these are two things that, you know, make it so much easier to manage my diabetes. Um, I've had the insulin pump, which is this one. So this is the one that I just took off, actually. I've had this insulin pump probably about five years now. I got it a year after I was diagnosed because they like to give you a year window to adjust to having diabetes before they throw in like an insulin pump that you also have to learn how to, you know, use. And then I got my glucose monitor, which is this, about two years after I was diagnosed. And let me explain what each of these things do. Okay. So this is my Omnipod. This is my insulin pump. So the purpose of the insulin pump is to give me insulin. Whenever I eat food, I have to take insulin for that food. And also this insulin pump works throughout the day, the night, at all times that it's on, giving me a basal rate of insulin because our bodies naturally produce insulin throughout the day. So instead of me having to, you know, press a button telling it to give me insulin every single hour, it automatically has a setting that gives me insulin every hour. And then again, whenever I eat, I can give myself more insulin. So everyone asks how big the needle is. Is it a needle? So this is what it looks like. And you can see the needle right there. It's a little blue. It's almost like plastic. See, I can like, I can bend it. I can poke myself with it. It doesn't hurt. And that is what goes in my skin and stays in my skin while this is on and gives me insulin. This is a glucose monitor. So while the insulin pump gets me insulin, this one monitors my glucose. So when I first was, when I first was diagnosed, I had to prick my finger whenever I wanted to check my blood sugar. So that was probably about, you know, five or six times a day, whenever I would eat, whenever I'd go to sleep, whenever I would work out or go to dance. So I was pricking my finger pretty often. And I got this thing about two years after I was diagnosed and it's made it so much easier. Um, I don't have to prick my finger which is pretty nice. The way this works is I have an app on my phone that the sensor sends the information to, and I can look at it and see what my blood sugar is whenever I need. It also will set off um, alarms if I'm going too low, if my blood sugar is going too high. If you've ever been one of my roommates, you've heard these alarms, and I'm sorry, thank you for putting up with them. They're quite obnoxious, um, but they serve a purpose, and it's nice because I don't have to think about my blood sugar as often. People also ask what these needles look like, and I'll go ahead and show you. They're a little bit longer. Um, a little bit skinnier. They're more of like a metal material. It's almost like a metal thread. So this one I've taken off. That's why it's a little bit, oh, well, the needle just came out. But you can see how. Okay, so that's how small the needle is that stays in the glucose monitor and stays in my skin. So let's go ahead and put these little gadgets on. I can't believe I said gadgets. Let's go ahead and start with my insulin pump because I need to be taking insulin right now. Obviously that basal rate that I mentioned earlier is not happening because I don't have an insulin pump on. So we gotta hurry this up. All right, so insulin pump comes in the package and this is like the remote control. See, it says my name. It's very bad clear, but this is the remote control that controls this insulin pump. I'm gonna press change pod. So that will deactivate this pump. That's what that beep was. So it deactivated this pump. So now that pump is trash. These stay on for only three days and they're not reusable. Once your you know, three days is gone, it gets, it gets thrown away. I'm gonna open this up. All right, so it comes with an insulin pump and then it comes with the, ooh. The needle, scary needle. Here's the vial of insulin. I take Novolog. Novolog is a fast acting insulin. So it's a little different than some of the insulins like Lantus, which I was taking when I wasn't on a pump because Lantus is long acting. So it serves as that basal insulin in the background. All right, we got our alcohol swabbed because we are sterilizing this bit. Okay. So we always sterilize the top of the insulin vial. And I'm gonna put this pump, I had it on this arm, which you can, might be able to see the slight discoloration of my skin. 
You get some really cute tan lines with these things on. Anyways, um, so I'm gonna put on this arm. So I'm gonna go ahead and, you know, wipe down the back of my arm with alcohol. Wipe down and let it dry. So now I'm gonna use my little handy dandy remote. Pod has been deactivated. It's asking me, do I wanna activate a new pod? The answer is yes. So this is the next step. We're gonna take the insulin. I mean, we're gonna take the needle. And then the insulin. All right, now we're gonna draw it out. So I usually put in about 120 units into my pump and that lasts me about three days. I usually do have a little bit left over in the pump and unfortunately you cannot draw it out once it's in the pump, but I would rather have a little bit left over than run out of insulin, you know, when I'm in the middle of something somewhere where I can't, you know, change my insulin pump. So we're gonna draw it out. Fun fact about me is I used to be pre-med. Now I'm pre-law, but I really could have flexed this skill had I stayed pre-med. But you know, everything happens for a reason. So now we're gonna get the little air bubbles out. We're gonna flick it, get those air bubbles rise to the top of the vial, and then we're gonna shoot some of it out. That gets the air out. This is about exactly 125 units of insulin. We're gonna press it all in. And there was a really faint beep. I don't know if you could hear it, but that means that the insulin pump has received the insulin. This is the priming stage. So you might be able to hear it, it's clicking. And that's basically the insulin running through the insulin pump. So once that stage is over, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. There's gonna be a beep and that lets me know I'm ready for the next step. There we go. So now the next step is to take this little plastic cap off. We're gonna peel paper off so that the adhesive is exposed. I'm gonna go ahead and apply it to my arm. I'm gonna press it down really good. Make sure it's laying nice and flat. The final step is the needle step. So if you listen closely, you're gonna hear it. It sounds like a stapler. And that's gonna be the little blue needle we talked about earlier, blue cannula, it's gonna go in. All right, so we gotta listen really carefully. And now it's in. The insulin pump is done. So I'm getting my basal insulin now. Whenever I get done with this video, I'm gonna take insulin because my blood sugar is probably a little high because I haven't had my insulin pump on for a little bit. Now we're gonna do the glucose monitor. The glucose monitor is a little bit less complicated, but sometimes it hurts a little bit more. That is a question, did that hurt? That didn't really hurt. It depends on where you put it. If you put it in a fattier area, it doesn't hurt as bad. Sometimes I'll put it on like a certain part of my arm where maybe there's more muscle and then I can feel it because it goes more into muscle than it does into fat. But usually that lasts for like maybe five seconds tops. It just feels like a little sting and then it's over. And then I can move it around. Doesn't hurt. I mean, it's a little tender right now, but you know, in an hour or so I can hit this thing and it will, I won't feel a thing. I will not feel that little cannula inside of my skin. All right. So now we're going on to the glucose monitor. So this one's a little bit scarier sounding. It actually sounds like a stapler and it's a little bit more intimidating because it comes in like this bigger apparatus, but it only is this big once it's actually fully applied. This glucose monitor, all these glucose monitors are good for 10 days. So this one I change every three days. This one I change every 10 days, but this little piece right here, it's like a little chip. I can get it out. This part gets thrown away. This little chip lasts for about three months. So I have to keep up with this for about three months because it's gonna be inserted into the next sensor I apply. And I'm going to apply my sensor to my lower back. All right, while I'm letting that alcohol dry on my lower back before I apply my CGM, I'll go through some frequently asked um, questions. So first question is, can you go in water with these devices? And the answer is yes. I shower in them, I swim in them, I go to the pool, I go to the beach, I go in hot tubs, I do everything in them. So what's special about this insulin pump and it's the number one reason I chose it is that it's wireless. So a lot of insulin pumps, the way they work is they have a similar you know, remote control, but the remote control is actually what stores the insulin rather than the pump that's on your arm itself. This cannot get in the water. So therefore you have to disconnect the wire that connects this and what would be this piece on your arm 
and then you are without insulin. So I didn't really like that, and I didn't mind the size of it. The ones with wires are slightly smaller because, again, they're not storing the insulin on the actual inside the actual pod. Um, another question that I get asked a lot is where can you place them? So the insulin pump and the CGM both can be placed on my arms, on my stomachs, on my stomachs, on my stomach, one stomach, on my stomach, on my legs, and on my lower back, you know, upper butt region, which is kind of where I'm putting the CGM now. Um, just places where there's tends to be more fat deposits, it just tends to hurt less. Um, and also places that they don't get it, you know, it doesn't get in the way as much. My favorite place to have mine is probably my lower back and my arms. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and insert the glucose monitor. So we're going to peel off the paper again. Go ahead and stick it. You take this little orange piece off because that protects the, basically the trigger you press that inserts the little needle. And this one sounds a lot scarier and it sounds like a stapler. So here we go. Now it's in. All right. And then the last step is we're going to take the transmitter and we're going to insert it. Clicks in. And now that is all done. All right. So now I'm completely set. I've got my insulin pump. I've got my glucose monitor. So now I have everything I need to help manage my diabetes, check my blood sugar, give myself insulin. And if you guys are type 1 diabetic and have any questions about the different insulin pumps and what I love most about these devices, feel free to reach out. I do 10 out of 10 recommend getting an insulin pump and a glucose monitor. And it's up to, you know, the individual person, of course, and what works for them. But this has definitely just made it easier for me. Um, and if something's more convenient, you're, I believe that you're bound to do better at paying attention to it. Or if it's more convenient, you're going to do better at managing your blood sugar or giving yourself insulin because it's just, you don't have to go through as much to do those things, which is great. Um, if you're not diabetic and you just have more questions about, you know, how these things work, what they're like, what it's like having them. I'm also totally open to talking about that. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys found this informative and hopefully it answered some questions you may have had about insulin pumps and glucose monitors, or maybe you've seen them on me and you've wondered what they were and now you know. So I'll see you guys next time.